Hi everyone, welcome to the next GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 88 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and in today's video we're going to focus on the topic of pie charts. So that's how to draw pie charts and also how to read pie charts as well. It's very important whenever you're doing pie chart questions that you've got the right equipment, so you're going to need your protractor. Um, some students like the 180 degree protractors, and that's the one that I would have used a lot in school, that 180 degree protractor whenever you're doing pie charts. But also I find that the 360 degree one can be quite useful for pie charts as well. I really like those 360 degree protractors for bearings. So you might actually want to experiment, see which type of protractor you like the best whenever you're doing uh, pie chart questions. But it's important you've got the right equipment, so you're going to need your protractor, obviously a pencil or rubber in case things go wrong. Um, typically whenever you're doing a GCSE paper, the outline, the circles drawn for you. So you may not need a compass in the actual GCSE paper, but whenever you're doing these questions, I may be useful for you to have a compass to draw circles to begin with. But in this video, we're going to focus on drawing pie charts and reading pie charts. So let's get started. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to look at pie charts, and we're going to look at how to draw pie charts, and we're also going to look at how to answer some questions based on pie charts that are drawn for us. So here we've got a table, and we've got the 90 rugby fans were asked who they supported, and we've got the team, England, France, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and we've got the frequencies 20, 5, 15, 25, and 25. So 25 people supported Wales, 15 people supported Ireland. Obviously, this data is not right. That should be that should be all 90 and so on. Okay, so we've got this um, we've got this table, and we're going to draw a pie chart. For for it. So if I want to draw a pie chart for this information, the first step I would do is add up the frequencies to see how many people there are all together. Now then the question says there's 90 rugby fans, so whenever we add these numbers together, we should get that's equal to 90. And 20 plus 5 is 25, plus 15 is 40, plus 25 is equal to 65, plus 25 is equal to 90. So that's fantastic. So there's 90 people all together, and we've, we've got a pie chart. And if you think about a pie chart, we've got a full circle, a full turn, so that's 360 degrees. So if we take 360, the degrees in a full turn or full circle, and we divide that by 90, the number of rugby fans, we'll find out how many degrees each rugby fan represents in the pie chart. So if we do 360 divided by 90, well, 360 divided by 90 is equal to 4, because 90, 180, 270, 360. Or if it's a calculator question, you could just type that in. So that means each rugby fan is worth 4 degrees, or it gets 4 degrees. So what we now know is that each rugby fan gets 4 degrees. So if we multiply each of these frequencies by 4, we can then find the angle of each one of our sectors in our pie chart. So we're going to multiply by 4, 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 and we're going to multiply by 4. Because if we had 20 fans and they get 4 degrees each, all together that'll be 80 degrees. So let's now write down angle. And let's find the angle for each one of the rugby teams. So 20 multiplied by 4 is equal to 80. So whenever we're drawing the England sector on the pie chart, that's 80 degrees. France, 5 times 4 is equal to 20 degrees. 15 times 4, well 15 times 4 is equal to 60 degrees. 25 times 4 is equal to 100 degrees. And finally, 25 times 4 is equal to 100 degrees. And we've got all our angles. And we can add those angles up and just check we get 360 degrees. So 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 60 is equal to 260, plus 20 is equal to 280, plus 80 is equal to 360. So that's fantastic. Now we just need to draw a pie chart. So here we've got our circle and our line. Now typically whenever you're doing a GCSE question, you've been asked to draw a pie chart. Usually that circle is drawn for you, so you don't have to get your compass out and draw. But if you were drawn one now, you could get your your compass out and draw yourself a circle if you wanted to. Okay, and we're going to draw this pie chart. So let's start off with England. To draw the England sector, that's 80 degrees. So we're going to go to our pie chart and we're going to draw an 80 degree angle. So you're going to get your protractor and we're going to mark on the 80 degree angle. So we're going to get our protractor and we're going to put the cross of the protractor on the center of the pie chart. So that's exactly there. And we're going to line up the line with the zero on it here at the top to the line that's drawn for us on the paper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find our 80 degree angle. So we're going to start at zero and we're going to go around this way. So we're looking at the angle on the outside here because we're starting at zero and it's on the outside so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 degrees is there so we're going to do a little dot there and then we're going to take our protractor away and we're going to draw a line going from the center through that dot to the edge of the circle like so and i'm just going to mark in that's an 80 degree angle and in a pie chart question you don't have to put the angle in but you do have to label each sector so that's for the england so that's there the fans are support england okay next next it's france which is 20 degrees so we're going to go to our pie chart we're going to get a protractor and we're going to rotate it so we're going to rotate it and i've just rotated the protractor so that the center of the protractor is still in the center of the pie chart and the zero is on the line we've just drawn. So every time you draw a new line, you put the zero on that new line. So we've drawn that line, we're going to put the zero on there and we're going to mark and we're going to measure 20 degrees. So 10 degrees, 20 degrees, so that'll be there. So that's going to be the sector for the French fans. So let's remove our protractor again. 
And again, I like to put in the angle, which is 20 degrees, and I'm going to say that's for France. So that's the sector for the French fans. Now we've got the Irish fans, and that's a 60 degree angle. Obviously, this information is completely wrong. That should be a 360 degrees. Uh, so we're going to mark on our 60 degree angle for our Irish fans. So we're going to rotate our protractor again. So we've got our protractor with the center of the protractor in the center of the pie chart, the zero on the line we've just drawn, and we're going to measure 60 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way around to 60 degrees, which should be there. And now again, we're going to move our protractor and mark on that line. And again, I like to put in what the angle is, that's 60 degrees. Well, that might be quite useful later on if we were to do a question and we might want to look at uh, the fraction of the fans that support Ireland and so on. And that angle is quite useful to have there. And then that's for Ireland. Next, we've got the Scottish fans, which is 100 degrees, and the Welsh fans, who are 100 degrees as well. So let's put those on. So again, we've got the centre of the protractor on the centre of the pie chart. We've got the zero on the line we've just drawn, and we're going to go round to 100 degrees. Then again, that's on the outside, so 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way around to 90, the right angle, and then another 10, because obviously that's an obtuse angle. So it's going to go past the 90 degrees. And then we're going to move our protractor away a second, and we're going to draw a line there. And that's for the Scottish fans. So I'm going to put in the 100 degree angle that we've just drawn. Again, you don't need to do that. I just like to do it. And I'm going to write Scotland. And then finally, the last sector here is for the Welsh fans, so Wales. And it should be 100 degrees. Let's just measure it and see if we've got it right. And as you can see, that is from zero all the way around to 100 degrees. So that's it. So that's correct. I'm just going to get rid of the protractor a second. Uh, so that is 100 degrees. So that's a 100 degree angle. And that was for Wales. So we've got our pie chart. And we've labelled England, France, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And I've put the angles on. Not that I've needed to, but I've put those on just because I like to put them on. OK, so that's it. We've drawn our pie chart. And that's it. That's how you draw a pie chart. OK, just so you can have a bit of practice now. I've got a table. It says show another the colours of the cars in a car park. And we've got red white, silver, black and blue and we've got the frequencies and what I would like you to do now is to work out the size of each of the angles for each one of these so if you were drawing a pie chart what would the angle be for red, what would the angle be for white, what would the angle be for silver, black and blue and then what I want you to do is if you have got a protractor and a compass feel free to draw a circle and to draw the pie chart and um, alternatively if you just work out the angles just to make sure that you're, you can work out the angles. OK, so to work out the size of each of these angles, I would add them up. Now, the question doesn't say how many cars there were. The rugby fans one did. So here we need to add up the frequencies. So we're going to do 17 plus 20 plus 2 plus 15 plus 6. And I'm going to do my calculator and I get that's equal to 60. So the 60 cars in the car park. Now, because of pie chart, 360 degrees, I'm going to do 360 divided by 60. That'll tell us the amount of degrees per car. So 360 divided by 60 is equal to 6. So each car is worth 6 degrees. So each car is worth six degrees or six degrees per car so that means if we multiply the frequency so the 17 red cars so that's 17 lots of six so if we do multiply by six multiply by six multiply by six multiply by six and multiply by six we'd find the angles and they would be the angles you draw on your pie chart so let's write it on our column for angle and let's do 17 times six that's equal to 102 degrees so hopefully you got that 20 times six that's 120 degrees 2 times 6 is 12 degrees 15 times 6 is equal to 90 degrees I believe yep 90 degrees and 6 times 6 is 36 so that's it so hopefully you got those angles and we can check them if we do 102 plus 120 plus 12 plus 90 and plus 36 that's equal to 360 and that's what we wanted so that's fantastic so we've found the size of each of the angles and that's it and feel free to draw that pie chart for some extra practice if you want to alternatively you remember we've got the practice questions so you can print those and in those questions you'll have the circles drawn for you so you won't need your compass you can just use your protractor Okay, so we've had a look at drawing pie charts, now we're going to look at reading pie charts. So here we've got a pie chart and it says the pie chart shows information about the colour of sweets in a bag. And we've got two questions. So feel free to pause the video now to try these two questions. So the first question said, what is the most popular colour of sweet? So we've got green, white and red. So in this bag, there's green sweets, white sweets and red sweets. And we don't know how many. A pie chart doesn't tell us how many of each of the sweets, but what it does is tells us the proportion. So for instance, I know that most of the sweets are green because it's got the biggest sector in the pie chart. I know that the quarter of them are white because that's a right angle. So that's a quarter of the circles, a quarter of them are white. And I know the red, that's the, the least common colour of sweet in the bag because it's got the smallest sector. So the question says, what's the most popular colour of sweets? So that's going to be green. So green. 
And then the next question says, what fraction of the sweets are white? So if we have a look here, that's a right angle, that's a quarter circle, so that means a quarter of the sweets are white, and that's it. If, for instance, you were given another question, so for instance, if this angle here, now it's not, but imagine this angle here is equal to 70 degrees there, and the question says, what fraction of the sweets were red? What I would do is, if it's nice like this one, where it's a right angle, and you know it's a quarter, you can just write a quarter. If it was three quarters, you could say three quarters or half, it's a half. But if you had an angle such as 70 degrees, and you weren't sure exactly what fraction it was, and you were asked what fraction of the sweets were red, you could just write 70 out of 360, the whole circle, and then cancel it down to divide by 10 and divide by 10, and you get 7 over 36 or 7 36. So that's how you would do a question if you didn't know the fraction right away, but you knew the angle. You could write it as a fraction out of 360 and just cancel it down. And that's it. So hopefully you got these two questions right, that it was green and a quarter. So well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, the pie chart shows information about the eye color of 48 friends. And we're asked how many of them have brown eyes. And we've got this pie chart and we've got green, blue and brown. So if you want to try this question now yourself, feel free to press pause and try the question. And in a second, I'm going to go through it. Okay, now just actually, before I go through it, I'm going to give you a hint. So if you actually just want a hint, this is a hint. So for green, we know that's a quarter. And here we've got blue, that's 120 degrees. Now 120 plus 120 plus 120 is 360. So this is a quarter here, and this one is actually a third of a circle. So you know that a quarter of the friends have green eyes, and that a third of the friends have got blue eyes. So that might be enough of a hint to help you do this question. Okay, so let's have a look at now doing the question. So if I want to do this question, well, green, we know that's a quarter, so I'm just going to write a quarter there. And blue, this is a third, because 120 plus 120 plus 120 is equal to 360, so that's a third. If you didn't know that that's a third straight away, you could write it as a fraction, so 120 over 360. You could cancel this down, dividing both of them by 10, which would give us 12 over 36. They're both in the 12 times table, so we could divide both of them by 12, and we get that's equal to a third. So if you cancel this down, you get a third. So that means that a third of the friends have got blue eyes. So we know a quarter have got green eyes and a third have got blue eyes and the rest must have brown eyes. So let's work out how many have got green eyes, so green. So it's going to be a quarter of 48, so a quarter of 48. And to find a quarter of something, we just divide it by 4, so we can just half and half it again. And half of 48 is 24, and half again is 12. Or knowing your 12 times tables, or your 4 times tables, the 4 times 12 is 48. So a quarter of 48 is equal to 12, so that means that 12 of them have got green eyes. 9 times of blue eyes, that's a third, so blue eyes. We need to work out a third of 48. And to get a third of something, you just divide by 3. So if we take 48 and we divide it by 3, that'll tell us how many of them have got blue eyes. So how many 3s go into 4? 1 remainder 1. How many 3s go into 18? That's 6. So that means that 16 of the friends have got blue eyes. So 16 have got blue eyes. So the question said how many have got brown eyes, that's going to be the rest. So we know that 12 have got green eyes, that 16 have got blue eyes. Adding those together would be 28. 12 plus 16 is equal to 28. So if we take that away from 48, that'll be how many have got brown eyes. So 48 take away 28 is equal to 20. So that means that 20 of them have got brown eyes, and that's it. So how many of the friends have got brown eyes? The answer is 20. And if you tried that yourself, hopefully you got that right. And if you did, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So our last question, we've got the pie chart show information about the results of the school rugby team and the school football team. So this pie chart shows us information about the results of the school rugby team, and this pie chart shows information about the results of the school football team. And we've got five different statements, and we've got to state whether these statements are true, false, or whether we can't tell. And if you want to, feel free to press pause now to give it a thought into whether each of these statements is true, false, or whether you can't tell. Okay, so the first one. The first one says the rugby team and the football team both lost a quarter of their matches. So as you can see, the rugby team did lose a quarter and the football team lost a quarter, so that's true. Okay, next, the rugby team won more matches than they lost. So let's have a look at the rugby team pie chart. And they won, well, they won over half of them and they lost a quarter, so they did win more than they lost, so that's true as well. And if you got these two right so far, well done. So our next statement, the football team won more matches than the rugby team. So is that true that the football team won more matches than the rugby team? Now, if we have a look at these pie charts, you might just look at it and think, well, the football team has got a bigger sector for win than the rugby team. Well, then you might think, oh, well, then they obviously did win more matches, but we don't know how many matches they played. For instance, the football team could have played, you know, 
40 matches, whereas the rugby team may have played 400 matches. And obviously, if you've got over a half of 400 matches, because that's over a half, that's going to be bigger than whatever this is off the 40 matches. So because we don't know how many matches they play, we can't actually tell who won more matches. So even though the football team won a bigger proportion of the matches than the rugby team, because we don't know how many they played in total, we can't tell if they won more matches. So we cannot tell. Okay, the next statement. The next statement says the rugby team drew a larger proportion of their matches than the football team. So that's a larger proportion. So let's have a look here. The rugby team, well, they almost drew a quarter. It's just under a quarter of their matches. Whereas the football team didn't actually draw many of their matches. So actually the rugby team did draw a larger proportion of their matches. They might not have drawn more matches, but they've drawn a larger proportion. It's got a larger sector. So that's true. And our last statement is that the football team played 10 matches last season. So the football team played 10 matches. Now, one thing that I notice here is that they've actually lost a quarter of them. So they've lost a quarter. And a quarter of 10, where to get a quarter or something, you divide it by two and by two again, you half and half it again. And half of 10 is five, and half it again is 2.5. So that'll be saying that they've lost 2.5 matches. Well, that's not actually possible. So the football team played 10 matches last year. That's false, they can't have played 10 matches last year because they can't lose 2.5 matches and that's it and that's it so i really hope you found this video useful on drawing pie charts and reading pie charts if you do have the court maps revision cards the foundation ones card number 25 is the revision card on pie charts and you might find that useful as well so today we've gone through pie charts can i just say we've got to 88 days to go if you've watched the video so far i'm really proud of how you've been working you've done fantastically well to get this far this little and often approach make a big difference to your confidence so for instance if you just do these chunks every single day leading up to the exams Hopefully you'll be much more confident in these topics as well. But also remember that you've got the fiber days. So if you're doing GCSE foundation, have a look at the numeracy fiber days and the foundation fiber days. And also if you're aiming for a grade four or five or you know that top grade, also have a look at the foundation plus fiber days as well. So hopefully that little and often approach as well as these videos will make a massive difference to your confidence. And just to keep up the good work, you're doing fantastically well. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.